Well, Melbournians are waking up to a very different city this morning. At midnight, the tough six-week lockdown coming into force. Police threatening on-the-spot fines for rule breakers as a ring of steel tightens around more than five million people. It comes as the state borders are snapped shut. The entire country hoping the drastic measures in Victoria will be enough to prevent a national second wave. To discuss, we're joined by Tasmanian Senator Jackie Lambie from the comfort and safety of Tassie and Nine's Brett McLeod right in the thick of it in Melbourne. Brett, to you first of all this morning, it's so tough right now. We feel for you. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, it, it's school sports day. All the rest of the class is allowed to run around and play sports. <laughs> and we're the sick kids told to stay in class and read a book. You know, it's just a little bit depressing. We, we're all... Everyone was a bit flat, I think, when the news came through on uh, Sunday yeah. that we're going to go back into stage three. There is a resigned acceptance. We're going to do it. We have to do it. There's no choice. But everyone's just a little bit flat about it because it's different this time. We're not all in it together. It's just Melbourne and Mitchell Shire. And, uh, yeah, we'll get on with it best we can. It's tough psychologically. I mean, you, it's like your lepers, isn't it? Awful. Yeah, it does feel a bit that way. And even though no one's necessarily done anything wrong, we're still, there is this funny sense of being punished. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Jackie, uh, the PM said that yesterday we're all Melburnians and we're all feeling uh, the pain at the moment. Are you worried about other states getting uh, this and catching up with, with Victoria? And you're worried about Tassie in particular? Um, yeah, of course. I think we always knew there was going to be a second, third, fourth wave, um, Carl, especially since there's still no vaccine. Um, and the other thing is you've got 20% accordingly that are out there that probably have no idea that they may be carriers. Mm. Uh, that's your other problem that you have. We've seen this since Mother's Day, actually. from two, About two days before Mother's Day, everyone went into lax. And I think this has been a massive problem. And we're still sitting there um, having arguments on whether or not we should have masks on, at the very least on public transport, in crowded shopping areas, um, anywhere where there's crowds. Should we be wearing face masks? I mean, they're supposed to be 70% reliable. Yeah. Uh, you, you watch people coming in and out of shops, they've stopped doing their hands, uh, things like that. They've stopped the social distancing. Mm. Uh, didn't take long. And it's, it's just something Australians are not used to. So psychologically, you've... You have to get them used to that, and I don't think we've done a very good job of that, to be honest. Uh, with the tough second lockdown, some tough questions on the mistakes which caused it. We had Premier Daniel Andrews on the show yesterday, uh, who's ordered an inquiry without really admitting blame. Um, Brett, do you have faith in him? This is going to be a real test of Daniel Andrews' leadership. I thought when this all started, he was delivering masterclasses yeah. on how to handle a crisis. He was frank, he was forthright, and people may not have liked the message, but they were willing to listen. That started to change first with Cedar Meats when he started to dodge answer questions on that, and then particularly with hotel quarantine, because it became obvious that was where the problems were meant. To, they were meant to be protecting us from this virus. In fact, they were taking it into the community. Mm. And Daniel Andrews kept avoiding answering questions on that. For weeks he's been pressed on it. For weeks we haven't had the clear answers we've come to expect. And I think rather than passing it off to a judicial inquiry, mm. the government should be frank and say, yeah, look, mistakes were made on our watch. It shouldn't have happened. But it hasn't even been that clear. And I think Maybe this isn't the time for too much navel-gazing, but it would help at least restore some authority for the Premier. Well, also, I mean, you just level with people in a time of crisis. You, you, you level with them and you say, look, they know exactly what went wrong. They've fixed it, right? Um, so, mm -hmm. so I think, Jackie, there needs to be, even though you don't want to dwell on it, you need to acknowledge um, and, and you need to level with the public, don't you? Oh, I think you always need to be open and honest in a crisis, but blaming one person for this when you're going to find it's going to, like I said, you've got 20% of people out there that carry this that probably have got no idea what they've got. It. You're going to have another Premier over the next few weeks explaining why it's out of control there. This is going to go just round in one vicious circle. And blaming people is not, is not the thing. What we need to do as Australians, and I know they're not going to like this this morning, we need to have a look at ourselves. Once again, are you washing your hands? Are you social distancing? Because you're still coming up and hugging me. So, um, you know, things like that, that's the sort of things that we need. We need to take responsibility as well, not just leave this all on the premiers. There's 20, mm. over 25 million of us, Carl. Yeah. And we've also got to say, hey, hey, maybe it's time to put these masks on. Maybe it's time to do the right thing and stop being so lax. And where was like the personal... Said, psychological change. And where was the personal responsibility inside those hotel quarantine areas? I mean, there was absolutely none. Um, let's move on just quickly. I want to get you on this too, Jackie, if we can. That devastating economic impact uh, from Victoria's second wave uh, is going to be costing, well, I think, a billion dollars a week, the Treasurer said on our program yesterday. Uh, would you support tax cuts uh, moving forward? Um, I would like to support that, but I'd really like it if they stop ramming 
um, uh, ramming legislation down our throat and at least make contact with us to let us know what they intend to do in the future. I mean, we've got a four or five week break now, which, by the way, we didn't need to have. We've had enough break. Many of us have been in isolation. Mm. We could have been doing some sittings in um, July and trying to do some catch up. And that's what I would have been doing. But um, thinking that the, the Liberal Party is the only party that is um, running the country, um, they're extremely delusional themselves. So I think, you know, just reach out and start communicating because it's not, not helping the situation. Ring us up and tell us what's going on, yeah. what you want. You uh, know, don't leave it until we get up there and just do what they normally do and say, that's it, just put it through. But, um, because that's not the way to do things in politics. But would you support in principle the tax cuts? Um, at this stage, unless there's anything, um, uh, certainly, unless there's anything attached to them, if it's anything nasty or anything yeah. like that. But if it's as long as it's what it was, the stage, I'm assuming they're talking about stage two. Yeah. That's what I mean, I'm assuming, because nobody has contacted us. OK, and Brett, just finally, I mean, businesses really need whatever help they can get, don't they? And, and more bad news today, um, no GF at the G. I mean, what? You may as well write 2020 off. Um, I don't know where this room has come from. I just heard, heard Croft, you know, give yeah. up the idea of having uh, the grand final in Melbourne. No, no, sorry, <laughs> other states. I know that uh, the Queensland Premier said because we happen to have loaned six teams to Queensland that they should automatically get the grand final. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. If it's played, and it's still a big if, uh, there is only one home for the grand final, and it's the MCG. End of story. I've got a feeling... Well, that... actually, there's only one home. It's Tasmania. <laughs> yeah, that's I knew you'd say something. We're ready. <laughs>